Hi, Ray Eves again with you today on this seventh video in this series entitled The Mayan and Ancient Egyptian People Discovered America, Built the American Pyramids, and Are the Fathers of the Aztecs and the Mayans. If you are new to this series of videos, I urge you, I recommend that you go back to video one so that you will fully overstand this video today. Or just subscribe to the channel and have instant access to every one of the videos, which are going to be many, that we are going to be putting out today. With, we will deal with the Mayan in Cambodia. Now, the Mayan did not mysteriously disappear from the planet. They never wanted to give up their Chinese traditions of virgin blood and children sacrifices. So, the Almecs made boats for them and shipped them all back to the area known as Vietnam, Phnom Penh, Guam, Malay, etc. When they got there, there were people already there that had mixed in with the Malians, the Chinese, and the East Indians on that side. The Mayan mixed in and settled with these people. They set up vast civilizations, one most commonly known as Angkor, in the central plain of Cambodia, also called Kampuchea. They erected giant, huge statues called Nagas, divine snakes, and protective spirits of the Khmer Empire, when they got, or which they got from the Hindus. The Nagas, also called Nagini and Nagas, were non-violent or a non-violent race of serpents, reptilians, who are benevolent to humans. In the plains of Cambodia, there are ruins of an ancient Angkor civilization that is remarkably similar to the Mayan ruins here in Central America. These similarities exist because, as stated before, the Mayan was sent over to Phnom Penh, which is the capital of Cambodia. In both civilizations, the structure of their buildings, the archways, the domes, the crowns are shaped in remembrance of the Mayan ancestors, the Tyros, as they are called by the Germans. However, originally, these ancestors of the Mayans are called Sunanans or Sinin. Another common term used in reference to these ancestors of the Mayans is coneheads because of their cone-shaped craniums, which you can see in the Mayan artwork. These Tyros are descendants of the elder gods who came from the planet Jomun, from the star Arcturus in the Boutis star constellation, also called the Plowman. This new combination or this new combined Mayan culture flourished and eventually fell under 
what is known as the Mongol Empire. In the 1200s, the, the, the Mongolian Empire, ruled by Genghis Khan, covered over Asia. The other tribes in America lived by the Almex rules until one such tribe, known as the Iroquois, got into trade, set up their own government, and invited the five demon nations, which are the French, the British, the Scottish, the Irish, and the Polish. Meanwhile, the Almex ruled from Chile all the way to Canada. The Hopis were the only group that held onto the customs and practices of their ancestors. They still follow all the customs of the Dogons to this day. So, when Mansa, Khan Khan Musa, came to the West, seeking out his brother, Abu Bakari, he, Abu Bakari, had already married in with the Almex, who, at that time, had already mixed in with the Mongolians. That mixture had branched off into such tribes as the Yuchi of Tennessee and the Washita or Washo or Wichiti in Kansas, Florida, Chicago, and Massachusetts. When the five Caucasian nations, namely the Irish, Polish, Scottish, French, and British or Germans came here to America and set up their government, their plan was to eliminate the Almec Nubun seed totally. They planned to accomplish this by what is called tying into the vine. Now, this is how they tie into the vine. They could not charm the Nubian women, so they enslaved the women and men, then killed the men, captured and raped the women and produced children. By doing, by doing this repeatedly for generations, it would eventually eliminate the original race. That's what they tried to accomplish here in America. Silly billies. Not knowing that the melanin-ite the original woolly-haired, dark-skinned moors came along with the original creation. That is, or which is, the same kind of ether forces that grew the universe. Original or primary creation is performed by nine ether beings or simply Assyrians, whose science is Nuwabu. Nine ether is the combination of all gases of nature and is the most potent power in all the universes. It manifests in the physical as kingly or woolly here which curls into a nine as it grows. Woolly hair also acts as antennas connecting the Nubian man, the Negro, to the sun 
and to the boundless universes. So, cherish this gift from the wise elders. Be natural. Getting back to the point, as nature was growing, these melaninites were a part of the original growth. To come along with a thing is to grow with or within that thing. Six ether and nine points from ether one into darkness. The melaninites, moors, almix, negroes, whatever name pleases you, that is, people with melanin manifest from point one in hydrogen on into nine elements, the eighth being oxygen for life. Therefore, melanin ice and their evolutionary descendants are the personification of the original creative forces. Simply put, Melaninites created the universes in their etheric form. Nine ether then personified themselves as flesh and blood beings. They became human beings from atoms to Adam. So, world, if all the melaninites, Almecs, Nubians, Negroes were eliminated or erased from this planet, there would be a star holocaust and all the planets in this solar system would go back into the sun causing a domino effect eventually destroying the entire universe. Wake up Nubians, Negroes and know thyself. The sun cycle is in. It is now our time. These are the teachings of Dr. Malachi Z. York. This ends tape number seven. I hope you have learned something from this video. I urge you to share this video and to subscribe to the only channel that will teach you true ancient Egyptian mysteries. No more lies, no more guesswork. So subscribe and click on the like button below. See you at video 8.